the man standing. Good morning. Let's. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the class of 2018 graduation ceremony. At this time, can we please all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and the singing of our national anthem. Flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing at this time for the singing of our national anthem being performed by our maestro singers, being led by Miss Hansen. Please be seated. Uh, uh, group hall. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm Dr. Washington, Prince of Warwick Valley High School, and I'd like to welcome my graduates and their families to the 2018 commencement ceremony today. I'd also like to recognize our district superintendent, Dr. David Leach. <laughs> our assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction, James Yap. Our assistant superintendent for business, Mr. Tim Holmes. Our assistant superintendent for human resources, Cindy Leandro. Our Director of Special Education, Megan McGordy. Our Director of People Personnel, Chris Fox. And all of my administrative colleagues, thank you. I'd like to recognize the Board President, Lynn Lillian. All of our Board Members, Sharon Davis, David Eaton, Aline Gagliano, John Garcia, John Garcia, Denise Ginley, Robert Howe, Dory, Dory Macefield, and Keith Parson. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome our superintendent from Greenman Lake, Dr. Stephen Cohen. I'd like to recognize the Warwick Village Mayor, Michael Newhart. Our Warwick Town Supervisor, Michael Sweeten. A special thanks to Marguerite Fusco, Steve Sweeney, and Jane Naples for the support that they provide me on a daily basis. Thank you. <clears throat> I also like to recognize uh, Denise Mark, Suda Ganj, and Chris Fox, and I want to thank them for their professionalism and years of service to the Work Valley School District and wish them well in their retirement. <clears throat> I want to thank all the teachers and counselors for all their hard work for the students that work by high school. And also finally thank our custodial staff at the high school and the high school office staff for working so hard tirelessly to set up this ceremony. Thank you.
The class of 2018 is very special to me because four years ago, we started our journey through Warwick Valley High School together. In four years, I've watched you develop into mature adults. I've celebrated athletic championships at the local, sectional, and state levels with you. I've been privileged to enjoy an enormous sense of pride when I watch you perform at concerts, plays, talent shows, and academic competitions. I always say that we have great kids at Warwick Valley High School. You are the reason why I can confidently make that statement. Your senior year has been nothing short of interesting. You are the students and members of a generation that have been presented with significant challenges regarding school safety at both the national and local levels. You have given yourself a voice in society and have demanded to be heard for ex exercising your rights as citizens. You now join the ranks of past you now join the ranks of past generations that have made a difference by taking a stand. I was told there are two things that can always bring people together. They are sports and music. It seems fitting that we are here today in this, in this sporting arena and this gymnasium to celebrate you. I'd like to unite this community even further through music. I'm inviting Chloe Borthwick to come up and sing a song that brings people together the right way by showing respect for each other's voices and individuality. I believe this song is a great representation of your senior year. This song is called What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. Please welcome Chloe Borthwick. Hello, check, check. Okay, I'm not gonna talk a lot. I just wanna say quick words. Um, it really means a lot to me that I can uh, perform this here today. Um, I've been in the class of 2018 in Warwick since I was five, and um, I just wanna kind of justify my song choice. Um, I think that what's going on is really um, a commentary on where we are as a society, politically and socially, and um, to a surprise of Dr. Washington and everyone here, it will be sort of a medley, and the second song that I'll be singing, I think, is more of a graduation theme. So, enjoy.
inside my head saying you'll never reach it every step i'm taking every move i make feels lost with no direction my faith is shaking but i always gonna be another mountain I'm always gonna wanna make it move always gonna be an uphill battle sometimes you're gonna have to lose and about how fast I get there and about what's waiting on the other side it's a cloud Thank you. Also, thank you, Chris Prasad, for accompanying me on Trouble. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. That was beautiful. At this time, uh, I would like to call to the stage uh, Jack Shankman, our salutatorian, and Jacqueline Grunfast to the stage to receive a special medal of commemorating their outstanding academic achievement and rank in their class. Please come up. I got it. I got it. Stay here. You know, you're good. Yeah, just stay here. Remarkably, both of these students start their academic career in the same kindergarten class. I think it would be only appropriate for the person who gave, who gave them their start at Rourke Valley School District present Jacqueline and Jack with these medals. Please join me in welcoming their kindergarten teacher, Ms. Taylor. To the class of 2018, I wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors. Please remember that just because you're not walking in the hallways anymore at Warwick Valley High School today, you're always part of our family, and you can always consider Warwick Valley High School a place of home. Thank you and congratulations. Our first speaker this morning is our salutatorian who will be attending Commonwealth Honors College in UMass. Please welcome Jacqueline Grunfast. Good morning, everyone. So after spending three years in the science research program, it seems quite sacrilegious to start any speech or presentation without Good afternoon, my name is Jacqueline Grunfast and today I will be presenting to you yada yada yada. So I figured for my final presentation, if you will, I would continue the tradition. Good afternoon, my name is Jacqueline Grunfast and today I will be presenting to you the 2018 salutatorian speech. If you are a senior, You've encountered the same question from nearly every adult, second cousin twice removed, or even the thousandth person who seemingly shows interest, so on and so forth. Let me set the scene. It's a Saturday night. 
You're up in your room, completely enthralled in the studying for your bio test on Monday, or more realistically, playing Fortnite. You suddenly feel the urge to travel to the kitchen, where the ultimate holy grail lies, the fridge. Is the potential meal worth dodging the adults sitting at the table, full of questions about your future? Yes. We're teenagers, so there are very few instances where food is not priority. You get up and make your way to the kitchen, very stealthily, I might add, and get to the fridge. You turn to make your escape, and bam, you have a kitchen full of your parents' PTA pals staring wide-eyed at you, and that's the moment you realize that you screwed up. I'm sure that every person sitting in front of me knows the question that will follow. The dreaded question that no teen wants to hear, but that is practically inevitable. Do you know what you're going to do in college? Now it's almost like we've gotten our answer down to a science. Yet the issue is, we barely know ourselves. Uncertainty is the commonality in all of us. Our entire high school career, and arguably our lives, are focused on how much we don't know, rather than on what we do. We enter our academic careers as blank slates, pure and willing to absorb all of the information we possibly can. We wade through our time in high school, always encouraged to ask questions. Well, unless you were me, then you were told not to ask so many. In order to discover what we are uncertain of. The thing that drives us all is the desire to learn everything. And our success is only found when we realize that this is a nearly impossible feat. If you truly think about it, education would serve no purpose if we knew everything. Going to college and finding a career would be quite boring if we already knew everything. As human beings, we're hardwired to be learners and to be inquisitive. This uncertainty drives us to explore what we're passionate about. If we never wondered someone's name, we would have never found our most trusted confidant. If we hadn't wondered how someone's day had been going, we may have never spoken to them when they had needed it most. If no one had asked how an apple fell to the ground or how light traveled, we would have no concept of gravity or relativity. But most importantly, what would happen if no one wondered how peanut butter and chocolate taste together? We would be living in a world devoid of Reese's cups, and that would be tragic. High school is the glue that holds our formative years together. This is the medium through which we are inspired to find a career, become fascinated with information we never thought we could know, and establish relationships that last for decades to come. Without this innate uncertainty that drives our lives, we would suffer from a lack of drive, and we may never even find our best friends. Our four years in high school have not only taught us valuable lessons while helping us to grow as people, but they have taught us how to continually foster this uncertainty that shows us who we are and what we aspire to become. To my fellow graduates, never fear the unknown and be proud to be that one hand posing the question that everyone else is too scared to ask themselves. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2018. Our next speaker has been a great support to the high school and the Warwick Valley School District. Please welcome the board president, Lynn Lillian. Thank you. Clearly, I should have spoken to Dr. Washington about not putting me after Jackie. Um, anyway, on behalf of the Board of Education, congratulations and welcome class of 2018. Today is an important day for you, but it's also equally significant for us all of us here today to celebrate your accomplishments and honor your growth and success. Commencement is a transformative event, the beginning of your adult journey, but it also represents a social contract, one in which we entrust you with the care of the world you'll inherit and the attendant responsibility to make that world a better place. One of the honors of serving as board president is to be invited to speak to you here today. And as a board, we're always energized by those opportunities in which we get a glimpse of who you are. A few of you here today were kind enough to share your experience in planning your post-high school lives with us. 
and we were reminded of something important about this graduating class. There are as many definitions of success and achievement as there are of you. We saw the manifestation of each of your distinct perspectives and worldview in the process and outcomes of your plans. And in your telling, you revealed to us how each of you have begun to apprehend your purpose. This same revelation plays out for us at art shows, games, award ceremonies, and days of service. We've seen your talent, hard work, integrity, and kindness illuminate the stories of who you are and who you'll, who you'll be. And as striking as the variety of paths you've chosen for yourselves is the maturity, self-awareness, and intelligence that's informed these decisions. We're fortunate to live in a community of densely woven personal connections and a sense of place that's the exception rather than the rule these days. The familiar and the comfortable, and most importantly, the experience of knowing and being known is what defines life in a small town. And for all the glorious variations in your stories, this is your common thread. You've spent a significant part of your life here surrounded by each other, and all of us too, moving in and out of the orbit of tradition, people, and places that remain a constant here. This shared experience has afforded you the opportunity to see each other in many iterations, as we've seen you. And by knowing others over time, you've been afforded the opportunity to comprehend the variety of human experience and the complexity of who we each are. That familiarity and connectedness is what engenders sympathy, compassion, and a sense of responsibilities for our neighbors and our place that in its best form translates to action in the larger world. It lets us know that for each of the unfamiliar people you'll come across in the larger world you inherit today, you'll recognize that they have their own stories and that more often than not, these stories are like yours and that you'll apply your talents and hard work with compassion and kindness. We've watched you become thinkers and doers, artists, advocates, and leaders. We've been privileged to watch the narrative of your lives unfold as a community invested in your future. And today, as we celebrate and bear witness to the beginning of your adult journey, we know the world is already a better place for having each of you in it. Congratulations, class of 2018. Our next speaker is the valedictorian of the class of 2018. who will be attending Princeton University in the fall. Please welcome Jack Schenkman. Good morning, faculty, staff, administrators, community members, families, and most importantly, the class of 2018. I can bet that right now, about half of you are looking at this, your phones. Some of you are probably playing games, some trying to live stream the World Cup, and others staring at the time, counting down the seconds until I stop speaking. Don't worry, it will only be about half an hour. Based on the fact that I have a phone, I would seem to be just another one of the millions of Americans carrying electronics. My text messages, photos of family, and collections of songs, I'm currently in a Beyonce phase right now, help to distinguish me from these millions of people and reflect my personality. Based on a survey of my family members, statistics would suggest that you might not remember any of my speech. I know, very uplifting. By our very existence, we all defy statistics. Some people characterize our generation as having an aversion to reading, except whatever our phones have to offer. While it is difficult to deny the power of knowledge and experience, we must acknowledge the advantages of their absences. Without enough knowledge, we do not have the ability to do anything. However, if we become so absorbed in the minutia of things, we can develop tunnel vision. We can have the means to drive change, but lack the heart. What scares me is going to college, busying myself with the nuances of some technical thing, and losing that naivete, losing that confidence derived partially from the unknown. I realize that my hair will gray and my skin will wrinkle one day. Plastic surgery can create a younger exterior, but only you can control your interior. 
For a young person, everything seems new. Everything appears to exist at the edge of their experience. As we age, we must search for our edge and live at the interface of the familiar and the foreign. Sometimes new simply means a re-examination of the old. This device serves as a chronicle of my life. All right, hold up. Maybe that is a bit dramatic. It has some stuff about me since this past November when I bought the phone. For our last project in Mr. Nelson's US government class, we had to create a public service announcement, a video about cybercrime. Pressing the record and stop button on my partner's iPhone was pretty easy. Figuring out what angle to shoot from, how to make it look like someone swishes a basketball from 100 feet away, and how to create a cohesive script posed the greatest challenges. I typed this speech in about an hour. However, realizing what to say stumped me for several weeks. Doing something often pales in comparison to figuring out what it is that you want to do. Following your passion is easy. Figuring it out can be a different story. This device is a paradox. Although intended to bring the world together, social technology has a way of isolating people. Some critics say that it makes us less human, but I see it as an embodiment of our existence. Apple Music, Pokemon Go, and Fortnite all demonstrate our shared culture, while our photos and notes depict our individualism. I looked to my phone for solutions to all different problems. Just last week, I had exhausted the supply of leftovers in my fridge, so I cooked some shrimp. I wanted to make a coconut sauce for them. After finding this can of coconut milk in my pantry, I started fiddling with my parents' high-tech can opener. Although I wish that someone could have helped me, it is probably better that no one saw my struggle. Naturally, I looked at YouTube videos on how to use a can opener. I would rather not get into the details because this whole debacle is quite embarrassing, but let's just say that I waited until my parents returned home to open the can and make the sauce. I know that you're all sitting at the edge of your seats wondering, so how did the sauce turn out? Well, it wasn't that good, I'll be honest. But some things, for me this especially includes handling household appliances surpass the limits of the internet. The entire fiasco reminded me that any real progress in the world comes from a human interaction. It comes from the fact that each of us is not a statistic, but a story. Whenever I need a source of inspiration, I tend to overlook Shakespeare, Mozart, and majestic scenery. Instead, I think of the 2008 should have been Oscar winner, Step Brothers, a comedy starring Will Ferrell. Near the end of the movie, the father talks about how when he was a kid, he would turn himself into a dinosaur, a physically impossible task. His dad told him to get a normal job, so he slowly lost his ability to transform himself into the reptilian creature. Everyone used to dress up as something. When I was about six or seven, I used to dress up as Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. I haven't done that in a long time, though. I cannot wait to become so enamored with something again. I said that there's a good chance that no one would remember any of this. So here are my main takeaways, class of 2018. First, we must not underestimate the advantages of our limitless imagination. Oftentimes, we talk about the things that we should gain in life, the things that we should learn. Equally important, we must hold on to the uninhibited mindset with which we are born. Second, most of the work exists in the preparation. Third, technology cannot replace the power of a human connection, and finally, the movie Step Brothers proves that we can find inspiration in the most unexpected of places. Thank you and congratulations. This year, senior student speaker for the class of 2018, who will be attending Yale University in the fall. Please welcome Wenlong Yang. Good morning, family, friends, faculty, and most importantly, class of 2018 graduates. Let me tell you all a quick little story. 
May of 2015 was when I was first notified of my parents' decision to start a restaurant business in upstate New York, specifically in a little town called Warwick. Initially, this decision for me meant departure, and departure translated to farewells to friends, family, relatives, and neighbors. Decade-long relationships that I've had since I was a child seem to have become broken in the blink of an eye. The thought of starting a new life in a completely unfamiliar environment scared me. To be more specific, however, I didn't want to be the new kid eating lunch in the bathroom stalls, the same new kid being pummeled with dodgeballs during gym class, and that one new kid who has somehow managed to forget to wear his pants on the first day of school. Looking back, these absurd imaginations and incessant nightmares had originated from one single factor, the fear of change. Let's face it, the truth is, nobody likes change. However, many times, due to this change-hating mentality, many are unable to see that the key to change is a willingness to accept and making the best out of the results. Without change, there is no innovation we would be forced to live our lives without our smartphones. A world without Snapchat stories, Instagram memes, YouTube drama, Yahoo Answers, and Google Translate is a world that many of us would not want to be a part of. But most importantly, we wouldn't have Twitter to check what Ben Knoll has to say about the winter weather conditions and possible snow delays in the Hudson Valley area. Without change, there is no growth. Whether it be physical growth, that beaming pimple growing on your forehead the day before prom, or mental growth, learning to reason and stand up for what we believe in, such as participating in the national school walkouts, change is inevitable. It is exactly these changes that has allowed each and every one of us to progress to where we are now as we sit in these seats to experience the last moments of our time together here as the students of Warwick Valley High School. Although changes are happening all around us, there is one thing that has remained the same since the very first day of high school, being together through all the thick and thin. We studied for our APs and Regents exams until even shots of espresso couldn't cure our lack of sleep. We cheered at the top of our lungs for our teachers and friends at each and every pep rally. And we held hands and hugged our friends tightly when dealing with the tragic loss of fellow classmates who I know are here today with us in spirit. Class of 2018. We are the class that adds extra in front of ordinary, and that is something to be proud of. But that pride didn't only come from our efforts, the teachers, administrators, coaches, and staff members at Warwick Valley High School are undeniably special. They worked tirelessly to give us guidance and support and pushed our limits to shape us into the strong and confident individuals that we are today and we thank you all dearly. And to our families, we did it, but we couldn't have done it without you. From diapers to diplomas, it was your overwhelming love, occasional lectures, and constant encouragement that brought us here today. You held our hands as we walked towards the doors of kindergarten while wiping away our tears. And today, we will return the favor by wiping away yours. We are the athletes, artists, scholars, musicians, achievers, and wildcats because of all of you. As we move towards our next journey, we will continue to use your love and support every step of the way. There is a universal truth we all have to face whether we want to or not. Everything eventually ends. As much as I've looked forward to this day, I've always disliked endings, whether it be the last day of summer, the final chapter of a great book, or parting ways with a close friend. We cannot deny one fact that remains true. Endings are inevitable. Leaves will fall, books will close. You will have to wave goodbye. And today is one of those days for us. However, class of 2018, this is no time for the long faces, because with every ending comes an even greater beginning, 
With every single closing of a door comes a new doorknob to pull open. With every beautiful whisper of goodbye comes a new bright hello. And with every closing of a wonderful book comes the excitement of unfolding the adventures to a new one. While this chapter of our lives is coming to a close, it is important to reflect and honor the achievements of our past, but it is also important to look towards the bright future that lays ahead of us. I dare you to turn the page of your story with fullness and take on this new chapter with confidence. I dare you to be strong, be brave, and I dare you to make the most out of everything that you do. Each of your lives has a story and has made a lasting impact on the legacy of Warwick Valley High School. And I know without a doubt that each and every one of you will continue to make an impact on the world wherever life may take you. Thank you and once again, congratulations to the class of 2018. Our next speaker is the superintendent of the Warwick Valley School District. Please welcome Dr. David Leach. The students that are sitting before me today likely represent the most talented graduating class of my career. Our futures are extremely bright. And before I begin my formal speech, yes, I checked with Ben Knoll. I promise so. To the members of the class of 2018, on behalf of the Warwick Valley Central School District, congratulations to all of you on this extraordinary day. In the words of the late, great comedian George Burns, the secret of a good sermon or speech is to have a good beginning, a good ending, and to have the two as close together as possible. <laughs> so I promise you, I will be brief. So here it goes. Integrity, being honest and having strong moral principles. Graduates, being a person with integrity is the most valuable asset that you have. Protect it. Treasure it. Don't let anyone take it. It is not for sale, and it is not measured with money. Make friends with those who set high standards for personal conduct. Follow those who demonstrate ethical leadership, no matter what college community, or career you've chosen, regardless of where you find yourself in the world, your character and high integrity are prized possessions. Without them, no real success is possible. In closing, I am so excited about your futures, and I am sad to see you go. At the same time, you have made friendships and memories that will last forever and you will always be a cherished member of our school community. Thank you. Our final speaker and a great leader is the Vice President who will be attending Hunter College in the fall. Please welcome Isabella Jardine. all three student speakers have said before me, good morning. And thank you for coming to the commencement ceremony for the 2018 graduating class. Welcome to the administrators, to the staff, and to the friends and families of the class. Without you, we wouldn't be here today. We did it. We constantly begged for its arrival, but now that it's here, it is most definitely bittersweet. We've spent hours upon hours reading, writing, and reviewing, and now our kindergarten through 12 education is finally finished. This is the last time we will all be sitting as a class. 
Look around at your classmates, your friends, and at your teachers that may have even become your closest confidants. This is the last time we will all be here. And before the power of commanding an audience of thousands goes to my head, I would like to give you some very important advice, brought to you by Mr. Mita's incredible class of critical thinking in the humanities. These four words may change your life. Break your default setting. Now, for a select few of you, you know, the geniuses that actually took the class, you may understand this phrase, but probably apply it to your life just as much as the people who have no idea what I'm referencing. Allow me to be a refresher. David Foster Wallace, a 21st century American writer whom some consider to be a genius, while others say he's a madman, and I believe he falls somewhere in the middle, he is the man that so deeply talks about the term default setting when applied to human behaviors. Now, your default setting is thinking that world revolves around you, which really isn't your fault because you are the center of your experiences and everything happens through your eyes. This is exactly why it is so hard to break away from this default setting. It is a conscious decision to put other people first. Before you judge someone or take action against something, you must think what could have happened or is happening to make them like this. An example Wallace gave is when people pass you insanely on the highway and you get angry or frustrated and think they're ruining your day, maybe their child is seriously injured and you are actually hindering their ability to save their loved one. Now, I know this might not always be the case, but this way of thinking allows you to open up for the better. In order to become a well-adjusted person, which, let's face it, is what we strive for in this society, you need to spend more of the day thinking of others and less of the day thinking of yourself. Changing your way of thinking from my day is ruined because they caused the problem to thinking we are all in the struggle together may seem like an impossible feat for some, but for all, it is necessary. This creates a sense of togetherness that we all so deeply need, a feeling of community greater than words can express. This brings me to my next point, a feeling that is greater than words as well, passion. This one little word will help in any situation. I stand before you today and ask you to think of something you truly believe in, whether that be basic human rights for all human beings, no matter race, gender, age, etc., or how Starbucks needs to really step it up with their name spelling on cups. I'm not here to judge your passions. That's me not going into my default setting. I'm here to compel you to speak up for what you believe in. It doesn't matter if you're the majority or the minority. If you feel that what you're standing up for is right, then you must follow that instinct. Yes, instinct, as in the deeper biological feeling that has saved us since we were cavemen. This feeling of passion is what drives us to be the best person we can be. Passion is the most important trait, and it will always see you through. I know I'm asking a lot, but let passion control your actions and do not let your default setting control your mind. These are the most important and reoccurring themes of critical thinking and as it happens in life too. As David Foster Wallace said, try to learn to let what is unfair teach you. So class of 2018, are we going to listen to David Foster Wallace? Are we going to strive for greatness? Are we going to let the unfair teach us to be the best we can be? I can answer these questions for you as a member of this class. In short, yes. We will set out to be the best versions of ourselves, and in turn, we will break all of our default settings. Thank you for your time, and congratulations to the class of 2018. We did it, now life begins. Thank you. And now the moment we've been waiting for, the presentation of diplomas. Please welcome Mary Fox, Julie Sokowski, and Ray Mark.
Catherine Abel. Alyssa Acevedo. Erin Ackerley. Andrew Aberly. Jessica Amundsen. Sophia Ambrosi. Ah, hang on a second, I practice this one. Sophia Ambros. Ambrosiados. <laughs> Kayla Anderson. Madison Anderson. Chloe Arcelli. Trevor Arnold. Tyler Artusa. Alexander Avery. Shane Babcock. Adrian Badio. Sarah Bailey. Bianca Batar. Julia Begel. Kalira Bell. Malcolm Bolar. Chloe Borthwick. Vanessa Bosch. Ryan Bauer. Catherine Bowman. Matthew Brack. Alexander Brand. Asia Brandt. Megan Bracunier. De Paul Brown. Hunter Brown. Aiden Brown. Julia Brown. Nikita Buchanan. Claire Bulkley. Joseph Berger. Kayla Bergoa. Jessica Burnett. Dean Bush. Jacob Butchko. Seamus Byrne. Cameron Cahill. Olivia Calacantis. Cal Calacantis. James Kahn. Joshua Carrick. Vincent Carney. Abigail Cartwright. Alexa Cassidy. Mackenzie Cotta. Ikani Chabi. Claire Kristen. Dylan Claudio. Tommy Claudio Jr. Christopher Cord. Anna Maria Costa. Jake Costantino. Kevin Cox. Ella Krosky Englert. 
Claire Curran. Shannon Curtin. Noah Daigle. Kyle Dallendorfer. Stuart Davidson. Emma Davis. Jeff Day. Sorry. We're ready. Jessica Decker. Sarah Decker. Alexis DeFries. Ryan Delaney. Lauren Desiree. Julia DeVito. Madeline De Palmer. Kevin Domasek. Brianna Doherty. Deirdre Duncan. Damaris Eckerson. Ashley Elbrick. Hayden Emrick. Justin Endricott. Sean English. Cassandra Felix. Caitlin Fenton. Samantha Ferrari. Eric Figueroa. Dorothy Finney. Brianna Flood. Nicholas Fatino. Nicole Frankie. Thomas Gardner. Jacob Gatos. Brendan Germain. Erica Gerpe. Janelle Gillespie. Francis Gleason, the third. Shay Gormley. Emma Gratzel. Bailey Greco. Summer Green. Jacqueline Grunfast. Marcello Reedy. Joseph Julino. Alex Gutierrez. Kara Haggerty. Taylor Hall. Andrew Hamilton. Hannah Hamling. Natalie Hawkins. Griffin Hayes. Robert Hayward. Melissa Hebel. Maya Henderson. Mia Hicks, 
Bridget Higgins. Jacob Hovmood. Jason Hranitz. Tatiana Ronchit. Nazare Hunter. Emily Irish. Isabella Jardine Vistoko. Daniel Jelinowitz. Sydney Johnston McCormick. Caitlin Kaltenmeyer. Sarah Kaplan. Connor Kelleher. Connor Kelly. Chandler Kent. Edward Karras. Gregory King. Travis Kipp. Uliana Qatar. Ryan Corson. Hannah Latori. Sam Latori. Kevin LaBarbara. Ethan Lancer. Samuel Langer. Connor Larson. Martino LaSalandra. Brittany Latour. Jack Leahy. Matthew Limbo. Michael Lentini. Evan Ligori. Demasia Lindo. Sabrina Lodato. Nina Moss. Brian McDougal. Andrew Mackey. Sean McNamara. Ethan McGuire. Natalie Manilis. Caleb Mannheim. Sadiq Manley. Jason Mann. Richard Mascal. Angela Mason. Maria Mazza. Ashley Mazella. Amanda McGraw. Crystal McHugh. Zachary McKenzie. Christopher McKeebit. Daniel McNally. Henry McNeely III. Ryan McVeigh. Brian Medina Silva. Troy Mednikoff. Lindsay Megna. Stephen Mealing. 
Jacob Melendez. Alexandra Mendenhall. Gabriela Mignon. Sarah Miller. Lawrence Momnani. Tracy Mon Tabano. Adriana Montgomery. Rachel Morshevsky. I got him. Matthew Morales. Alejandro Morales. Shauna Morgan. Sarah Muller. Lindsay Mulhaupt. Mary Murphy. Skylar Murphy. Samantha Navayas. Muhammad Naz. Taylor Nelson. Henry Newhard. Larissa Wynn. Lillian Nicholson. Justice Nieves. Brooke Nielsen. Juliana Noon. Hannah Nuttall. Colleen O'Brien. Olivia O'Connor. Shauna O'Donnell. Brian O'Hayan. Octavio Olivar Vargas. Matthew Olert. Jennifer O'Reilly. Eric Ormsby. Heidi Otley. Gabriel Pagan. Alexandra Palmieri. Dylan Parkinson. Harrison Pirelli. Richard Pursuit. Jason Padone. Connor Perez. Dominique Perkins. Ryan Finkst. Alexandra Phelan. Morgan Phillips. James Pinelli. Jack Pinkham. Caitlin Pinsky.
Kaczynski. Javen Pitzenbarger. Vaughn Pullman. Daniel Polka. Greta Polsky. Emily Post. Tyler Priestner Work. Casey Pertel. Taylor Quattrochi. Aaron Ramos. Austin Randall. Matthew Rapoli. Dean Redman. Liam Redman. Ryan Richards. Kyle Richter. Paul Riggio. Quinn Riley. Carolyn Rink. Christina Rivas. Jolice Rivera. Rashamir Rivera. Shefa Rizvi. Tabitha Robledo. John Roca. Catherine Roderka. Alexander Ronnie. Callie Rubin. Madeline Rudy. Sabrina Rufrano. Timothy Russell. Brody Ryan. Madison Ryan. Isaiah St. Rose. Nikolai Samarja. Olivia Sambataro. Micah Sander. Miranda Santiago. <laughs> Alyssa Schackinger. Jack Schenkman. Joshua Schonau. Brianna Schultz. Henry Searle. Jared Sinius. Christopher Shea. Connor Shea. Megan Shea. Patrick Shea.
Robert Sheridan. Madeline Short. Russell Showalter. Jack Singer. Morgan Sirota. Samuel Sismi. Catherine Smith. Victoria Smith. Christopher Somer. Dane Sorensen. Michael Space. Harley Streiso. Benjamin Tate. Ryan Tellier. Caleb Tatro. Nicholas Thiel. Seth Thompson. Leda Torres. Brian Torres Confessor. Lucas Triantis. Brandon Turner. Justin Urbancic. Garrett Van Gelder. Julia Vargas. Triana Velez. Cara Verhaeg. Jack Vignola. Adriana Villegas. Nicholas Villegas. Maxwell Vonderhorst. Nicholas Fulick. Sarah Walker. Sierra Walsh. William Walsh, Jr. Layla Bella Walter. Rachel Wontroba. Alec Warnock. Eric Warren. Kira Washio. Benjamin Wiegas. Emily Welling. Gabriel Worsby. Andrew Wearsbecky. Jake Willamy. Aaliyah Willis. Kaylin Wilson. Catherine Wickstrom. 
Trevor Wright. Wen Long Yang. Julia Yunin. Kaylee Zacco. Cameron Zimmerman. Let's hear for the class of 2018. Not yet, not yet. Dr. Leach. Thank you. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the New York State Education Department and by the Board of Education, I hereby confer upon each of you high school graduates of the Warwick Valley Central School District, along with the rights and privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereunto, my heartiest congratulations to each and every one of you. You did it. <laughs>